listen, I know you are comfortable in your house, but come on, let's give God an amazing praise right here. Every praise that you have on the inside that you're waiting to get out, go ahead and release it to him right now in the name of Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. God, we bless you. We praise your holy name. You are so worthy to be praised. Come on, from right where you are, whether you're driving down the road, whether you're comfortably in your home, I want you to give God the greatest praise you can give unto his holy name. Hallelujah. God, you're worthy to be praised. And we bless your holy name. We lift you up. We magnify you. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Glory. You're worthy, God. No other God like you. You are the true and living God. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy that you have allowed to rest upon our lives. It has allowed us to stand right here in this moment to give your people your word. God, we applaud you for the tongue of the learned that we may speak a word in season to them that are weary. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. My mouth shall speak of wisdom. The meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. God, you said in your word, we shall decree a thing and it shall be so and so. We speak blessings over these, your people who are listening. We speak peace in their homes. We speak financial security. We speak good health and strength. God, tonight, deliver the bound, save the lost, heal the sick, set free the shackled. God of mercy, God of love, reign on us from heaven above. When it's all said and done, all praise and glory belongs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for tuning in tonight from, from wherever you are watching from, and I greatly appreciate you. Uh, do us a favor and hit that share button as we go to the word of God for this time together. God put in my heart uh, to take time to encourage, to give instruction and direction uh, to pastors, leaders, and the body of Christ during this pandemic. These messages will carry an apostolic overtone, uh, but will give a life to the thematic thrusts. And I believe uh, that the word will be weighty enough uh, to sustain you through in coming days. I want you to join me in Acts chapter 12 and verse 13. Acts chapter 12 and verse 13. It reads, and Peter knocked at the door of the gate. That's enough right there. And Peter knocked at the door of the gate. Um, for the time that is mine to share with you from the word of the Lord, I want to preach from the subject, knock, knock 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 if we were in the sanctuary i would say you may be seated i want you to make sure you hit that share button so that someone can receive this life-changing word tonight I, I bless the name of the lord for this another privilege he has afforded me to speak into the lives of men and women boys and girls who i believe are sensitive to the voice of god in this season uh you have to be you have to be because the church is in a crucial season, whereas much attention must be paid to upholding the authenticity, the integrity, and name of the church. Living in this social media age, this age of exposure where people are searching for ways to discredit everything that seems legitimate everything that seems right. The church has to be sensitive to the voice of God. I want to submit to you that the conquering of the church, the conquering church rests upon the sensitivity and the discipline of the hearer of the voice of God. Everyone who claims to hear God doesn't really know him. I believe that the phrase God said has been used as a way to appear spiritual, you know, to have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof instead of being a validating statement for the authenticity of what is being spoken. The truth of the matter is, and I hope you catch this, you have to be near him 
to hear him. Uh, if you would just type that in the text box, you have to be near him to hear him. I believe that if you're going to be a servant in the kingdom, you probably have to have a relationship with the king. One of the devastations of the church is that we have time and time again validated, ordained, consecrated, and promoted people because their gift was strong and their perspicacity of church, their knowledge knowledge of church and churchiness was attractive and strong and we stop examining their relationship with the head of the church uh, because they are gifted we label them anointed and it's not the same thing I hope you hear me gifted and anointed is not the same thing there must be relationship uh, uh, there has to be relationship. The relationship is important because if we are going to complete the assignment given to us by God, then we must press our ear firmly to the mouth of God to hear what he is saying to us in this time and season. And then we must have a relationship with him that if he speaks, we are not confused at what voice we are hearing. Uh, I believe that the church has lost ground. That's why God called me. Uh, to these two nights of revival and revolution because the church has lost ground, has lost focus, has gotten off track, got behind God's timeline and schedule because we've allowed our own agendas, we've allowed our own thoughts, our own plans to interfere with what God is saying to the church. Could it be that the downfalls and the ineffectiveness of the church is because we have elevated ourselves as God. Oh God help me here tonight. Whenever we implement our own agendas because of our own insecurities, we insert our own feelings, our emotions and plans and then we say God said we are actually counseling the power of God to work through the church. Oh, a lot of us are in God's way oh yes we are not the devil we are the problem we won't move when God says move we won't shift when he says shift we won't stop when he says stop because we don't have a real relationship with God God, when, when you don't have a real relationship with God, it's easier to disrespect the value of what he says. Uh, I hope y'all were talking to me in the text box tonight. Uh, just type real quickly, get rid of your agenda. Get rid of your agenda. The church isn't about what we want to see. It's about what God is instructing us to complete so that he can be seen. Oh yes, we are in a battle. We are in a war. Or Jude opens his writings by saying, listen, I was going to talk to you about, you know, the salvation that we share, uh, but I need, it is necessary uh, that I switch subjects and I, I need to tell you to fight for the faith. Uh, the enemy desires to sabotage the influence, the realness, the authenticity of the church, but we must be authentic servants of God. God. So when we fight, we fight with power. Uh, in preparing this word, I ask God, well, what are we fighting against? What is hindering the church from progress, from advancement, from relevance, from productivity, from effectiveness, from greatness? What is it that gives Satan the advantage? What is it that gives hell the victory? As we gather for conference and convocation and uh, sessions and seminars, and now we're doing everything Thing virtually online this and online that what is it that causes us to return to our local assemblies and nothing changes nothing progresses nothing gets better tonight God is going to expose the tactics of the enemy through the text uh, this story actually deals with the persecution of the church by Herod Agrippa um, the, the martyrdom of James and the miraculous deliverance of Peter God watched and noted what Herod Agrippa the first was doing to his people. This evil man was the grandson of Herod the Great who ordered the Bethlehem children to be murdered and the nephew of Herod Antipas who had John the Baptist 
beheaded. It was a scheming and murderous family. The, the Harris were despised by the Jews who resented having Edomites ruling over them. Uh, I need you to catch this because of course Herod knew this. So he persecuted the church to convince the Jewish people of his loyalty to their traditions uh, of their fathers. Uh, Herod uh, had several believers arrested. Among them, James, the brother of John, whom he beheaded. As a result, James became the first of the apostles to be martyred. Uh, when you ponder his death in light of Matthew 20, 20 through 28, it takes on a special significance. James and John, with their mother, had asked for thrones. Lord, have mercy. But Jesus made it clear that there can be no glory apart from suffering. Jesus says, are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of? and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Uh, they boldly replied, we are able. Of course, they did not know what they were saying, but they eventually discovered the high cost of winning a throne in glory. James was arrested and killed, and John became an exile on the Isle of Patmos, a prisoner of Rome. You got to understand, you got to be careful what you ask for. When you ask God to elevate you to different levels, you got to be careful because with the initiation of elevation starts the process oh Lord have mercy and you got to be ready to handle what comes with that process indeed oh yes James and John did drink up the cup and share in the baptism of the suffering that the Lord had experienced understand now that James and Peter were changing the culture please catch this up they were changing the culture they were effective in ministry. And so King Herod stretched forth his hands to vex the church. Now, this is a plot to kill the influence of apostolic ministry. The church is moving in an aggressive a strong momentum. People are leaving false gods and coming to the church and Herod started moving to go after the church. His goal was to stop the size and the influence of the church. So Herod then kills James the brother of John with the sword. This is the picture of what one writer calls apostolic assassination. I hope y'all are with me here. That's why you need to pray for your leaders. Oh, you got to pray for your leaders, especially when your church is on an incline because momentum breeds demonic attack. Are y'all hearing me? Momentum breeds demonic attack. Ah, whenever there is a report of threat sent to hell about a leader or individual pushing to change the culture demons are alerted and plans of demise are set forth Satan hates apostolic alignment he hates apostolic vision he hates apostolic instruction correction and direction verse 3 of the text says it pleased the Jews because they were traditional minded and what James and Peter were speaking was messing up the flow of their traditions. So the fact that Herod killed James pleased the Jews. And he says, okay, let me go get Peter. Let me go get Peter. Uh, I need you to catch this now. Herod kills the apostle because of the traditions of the Jews. One thing that will stop the flow of apostolic ministry, one thing that will hinder the progress of the church is tradition. Uh, I need you to type in the text box watch out for tradition. Oh yes, Mark's gospel says the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to Jesus and saw the disciples didn't wash their hands Lord have mercy before they took of bread and it was the tradition of the Pharisees and the Jews to wash their hands before they ate so they asked Jesus why don't your disciples follow the 
tradition of the elders. Do you know what Jesus' response to them was concerning them and their tradition? Oh yes, oh yo, no, no, stay with me, stay with me. Don't start scrolling, stay with me. Jesus says, you hypocrites. Isaiah prophesied about you when he said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me and in vain do they worship me teaching as doctrines the commandments of men you make the word of God of no effect because of your traditions listen to what James Nesbitt says I need you to catch this he said if the spirit of traditional usage and influence holds a citadel in a man's life the spirit of progress cannot gain an entrance let me rewind and say it one more time he says if the spirit of traditional usage and influence holds a citadel in a man's life the spirit of progress cannot gain an entrance ah catch this now there is a lesson which the savior presses there's a lesson in which the Savior presses upon our attention by his denunciation of Pharisee usage, habit, and attitude. And it is hardly possible to overestimate the importance of this lesson because the same spirit of Pharisee tradition is constantly laying hold and laying a hand upon every human institution. And it is contributed to every abuse or perversion that has taken possession of of the Christian church uh, a large part of the church is bound by tradition and that's why many churches are dying missing God missing progression falling behind and becoming irrelevant and extinct because you won't let go of your traditions oh yes the Jews were okay with James because James represented they were they were okay with James because James represented a new way of doing things oh they didn't like that they didn't like that he represented a new image for the church he represented progression and and forward thinking and the Jews said we are been holding on to our traditions and we don't want to uh, shift with the culture uh, so we are happy that you killed the apostle Herod oh yeah we're happy you killed the apostle and Jesus says it is the tradition of man that makes the word of God of no effect Jesus says the only thing that can silence my voice the only thing that can hinder my work and my effectiveness is the tradition of man Lord have mercy so the church needs to step back and ask itself what are we doing that ain't working that we keep doing just because of tradition what are we holding on to because we are stuck in our old ways and the old times what are what is stopping us from moving forward Jesus says I'm speaking but your tradition is making my voice carry no weight it is in Matthew 13 58 that the Bible says Jesus could do no miracles because the people's unbelief and their unbelief was based in their traditional mindset of what Jesus should look like and be like so the Bible says because of their traditional thinking Jesus could do no miracles let me help the church tonight because this is still true today some of us are holding up Jesus miracles we're holding up Jesus moving we're holding up Jesus changing lives because of our traditional thinking oh I just need you to type in the text box come out of tradition yes sir no 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 I need you to obey obey come out of tradition now don't go off and think that no tradition means no standard because it ain't the same thing no tradition means that we do away with the customs and practices that we deem as doctrine but they ain't in the scripture but the standard is upholding the actual doctrines of God in other words do away with our agenda 
woo, uh, and uphold what God is saying. So many of our churches are still stuck in what God has said, and we are missing what God is saying. I don't know about you, but uh, especially in these days and times, I want to be where God is and not where he was. I want to be operating in what he is saying and not what he did say. Uh, so they were happy. They were happy that King Herod now wants to kill apostolic ministry because of the Passover happening at the time Herod didn't want to be inappropriate by killing Peter so he just threw him in prison uh, you have to understand the plot of the enemy is to always have what one writer calls a conspiracy of apostolic incarceration uh, yes this is another thing that keeps the church from progressing forward what the devil loves to do is shut down apostolic vision oh yes he loves to lock it up he loves to put it behind bars where it has the inability to function the devil knows that's why he says the devil uh, will say you know what you can have all the vision you can have all the revelation you want you can have all the insight that you want uh, but I'll keep you back I'll keep you behind God's schedule because I'll let you have ministry but no building I'll let you have vision but less members Oh, and every time you gain some new members, I'll send some members out the back door. Oh, I'll keep you by vocational and working several jobs to the point that as a pastor, you can't focus on ministry. Oh, you can't be effective and focus on what you got to do. Some of you don't understand how much pressure and attack your leader is under weekly. The devil is afraid of apostolic visionaries because apostolic Apostolic ministry is not the only for the church. He knows if apostolic ministry becomes known, begins growing, begins gaining influence, it's going to run demons out of the region. It's going to run demons out of the city. It's going to take over territories. It is the anointing that changes the culture and takes authority over the city and the region. That's why all through Acts, the apostles were always locked up. Lord have mercy if we, can, if we can't kill you we gotta stop you somehow we gotta lock you down uh, so that's where uh, there are so many and why there are so many apostolic ministries in bondage right now vision but limited resources plans but no building to function in anointing stifled exposure uh, yes sir because the devil wants to stop your influence you can have all the people you want all the money you want but then the enemy will mess with the mindset of the people he said I place people in in the midst of them to frustrate their purpose that's why it seems like everything is growing around you pastor but you can't go forward because your people's mindsets won't work with the vision so they lock Peter up Lord have mercy but uh, I'm getting ready to close in just a minute but the church had a relationship with the head of the church and the Bible says that the church was in constant prayer God needs a praying church prayer has to be the foundation of the church Jesus says oh, and my house shall be called a house of prayer prayer. Uh, uh, Chris Wells says this about the church praying for Peter and I quote uh, did you not know that prayer is the real battlefield of the world? Uh, the whole universe looks down upon a little group interceding for the life of their chief apostle. Uh, God looks down upon it. The angels look down upon it. The host of heaven look down upon it. Uh, the powers to be the ages look down upon it. The real battlefield where the decisive event of time and history are decided is in the faithful group of followers of the Lord who are down on their knees praying without ceasing to God end quotes 
God desires us to be a praying church. Lord, have mercy. I feel good. Your church can have all the ideas. It can do all the fundraisers. Have all the programs. All the money. All the gifts that it wants to have but it will not be effective if it's not a praying church yes sir just like in the text while the enemy is trying to destroy the church and its leaders there must be praying believers Let's walk through this text and I'm getting ready to fly. Uh, then the time came for Herod to bring him out for the kill. Uh, that night, even though shackled to two soldiers, pay attention to the text, two soldiers on either side, Peter slept like a baby. Uh, uh, can I tell you something? I don't care what has chained itself to you. Uh, chained itself to your life and your situation. Uh, you need to go to sleep tonight. Uh, oh no, ain't no need of you stand up all night worrying huh, about what tomorrow may hold. Huh, no, no, no. Huh, you need to go to sleep. Huh. If we serve a God that neither slumbers nor sleeps, huh, there's no need of you sitting up all night depressed, huh, sitting up all night going through in your mind, huh, sitting through all night facing mentally what you have not faced in reality. Huh. Oh, no. Huh. Oh, you ought to go ahead and type in the text box, huh, I'm going to sleep tonight. Huh. Yes, sir. I'm going to sleep tonight. Uh, the Bible says that Peter slept like a baby and there were guards at the door keeping their eyes on the place. Herod was taking no chances. I always ask myself, why was Herod so adamant about chaining uh, Peter up to two soldiers on the other side, guards at the door? Why is he so adamant about chaining Peter up? It's because Peter got away one time. Yeah. Uh -huh. Lord have mercy can I tell you something no matter how you try to bring the church down we will always rise again we will always find our freedom again yes sir ah, watch this now suddenly there was an angel at his side and a light flooding the room the angel shook Peter and got him up ah, hurry the handcuffs fell off his wrist the angel said get dressed put your shoes on Peter did it then he said grab your coat let's get out of here Peter followed him but didn't believe it because uh, he didn't believe it was really an angel he thought Peter thought watch this the Bible says Peter thought he was dreaming oh Lord have mercy can I give you a quick revelation right through here uh, y'all come on and help me right through here let's encourage the people because the truth of the matter is the next miracle God's going to give you it's going to be a dream come true. Lord, have mercy. I told my people that I am living and I didn't see that coming season. Oh, everything that God's getting ready to do for you, you're going to say, I think this is a dream. This can't be real. This can't be working like this. I know I prayed for it, but is God really turning stuff around the way he is? Oh, yes, sir. Just type in the text box. A dream come true. Yes, sir. Woo. All right, all right. Uh, uh, they passed the first guard and then passed the second. Uh, then watch this. They come to an iron gate. Ah, uh, yes, sir. They come to an iron gate that led into the city. Uh, it swung open before them on its own. Uh, oh, Lord. Now, when I saw this part of the text, uh, uh, God spoke prophetically to me. Uh, and he said, I need you to tell the people to declare over their life uh, a season of open open doors oh lord no 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 don't you take this word as if it is elementary no 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 the bible says when ah, the angel bust peter out of prison and they got to the gate of the city the gate swung open on his own Lord have mercy yes sir ah, the next season you get ready to go into you're not going to have to touch nothing doors are going to open when they see you coming Lord have mercy ah, and they were out in the street now free ah, as the breeze watch this now ah, at the first intersection the angel left him ah, he said go on your way 
Uh, now, uh, that's when Peter realized, uh, let me slow down just a little bit. Peter realized uh, that this was no dream. Uh, uh, he said, I can't believe it. It's really happened. Uh, the master sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's vicious little production. Watch this. Uh, and the expectations uh, the Jewish mob was looking forward to. Uh, uh, rewind. Let me say it one more time. Uh, uh, he says the master sent his angel uh, and rescued me from Herod's vicious little production uh, and the expectations uh, uh, that the Jewish mob was looking forward to. Can I tell you something? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I know what people expected to happen to you. Uh, oh, but I dare to type in the text box, it ain't going to happen. Uh, I know you expected me to die, uh, but it ain't going to happen. I know you expected me to give up, but it ain't gonna happen. I know you expected me to throw in the towel. You expected my church to shut down. You expected us not to make it through the pandemic, but it ain't gonna happen. God is gonna open a door for me. Lord, have mercy. All right, all right, let me work a little bit more. Still shaking his head amazed. He went to Mary's house. And Mary, Mary, who was John Mark's mother, the house was packed with praying friends. When he knocked on the door of the courtyard, the young woman named Rhoda came to see who it was. But when she recognized his voice, when she recognized Peter's voice, she got excited. She got excited and eager to tell everyone Peter is at the door. She got so excited to tell them that Peter was at the door that she forgot to open the door and left him standing in the streets. Oh, yes, sir. Ah, but watch this. They wouldn't believe her. They were dismissing her. Please don't miss this. Ah, they dismissed her. They were dismissing her report. They said, you're crazy. Ah, ah, they said, you, you, you've lost your mind. But she stuck to her story insisting uh, but they just not they would not believe her uh, can I tell you something you have to be careful uh, we have to be careful church especially in this day and time uh, because you got to understand it says Rhoda was a damsel uh, a damsel means a teenager uh, which means that for the church to get the knock of the door answered uh, you're gonna have to listen to the next generation Lord have mercy I hope y'all feel this I hope you hear me it's time now for us the older generation and us the younger generation to come to the altar in holy matrimony and one generation coupled with the other generation so that we can complete the assignment that God has given us I watch this another revelation from this is that you gotta be careful because there will be people in the church dancing with you, running with you high-fiving you uh, saying yes Lord with you uh, uh, but don't believe like you believe how in the world are you going to be in the prayer meeting and then when the answer comes to the door and Rhoda runs in and says get up off your knees stop praying stop speaking in tongues what we've been praying for is at the door and you look at the answer and say you're telling a lie Lord have mercy all this time all this time poor Peter was standing out in the streets oh, Lord have mercy knocking away I'm on my way to E flat in just a minute. Let me work a little bit more. Finally, they opened to him and saw him and they went wild. Peter put his hands up and calmed them down. He described how the master had gotten him out of jail. Then he said, tell James and the brothers what happened. He left them and went off to another place. At daybreak, the jail was in an uproar. Where is Peter? What's happening? 
happened to Peter. When Herod sent for him, they could neither produce him nor explain why not. He ordered that they be executed off with their heads. Fed up with Judea and the Jews. Now the Bible says he went on vacation in Caesarea. But things went from bad to worse for Herod because now the people from Tyre and Sidon put him on a war path. But they got Blastus, King Herod's right hand man, and put in a good word for them and got a delegation together to iron things out because they were dependent on Judea for food supplies. They couldn't afford to let this go on any longer. On the day set for the meeting, Herod robbed of uh, robbed of his, his uh, uh, mentality. He was uh, robbed of his self-righteousness. Uh, took his place on the throne and railed out a lot of hot air. Uh, uh, the people played their parts uh, uh, to hilt and shouted flatteries to them. Uh, uh, the voice of God, the voice of God, Herod says. But that was the last straw. I need you to catch what happened. God had had enough with Herod's arrogance and sent an angel to strike him down. Lord have mercy. Herod had given no credit for anything. Down he went. The Bible says rotten to the core. And Magni, old man, if there ever was one, he died. Watch what happens now because the very man that was sent uh, to come against the church, he vexed the church. Meanwhile, at his death, the church grew by leaps and bounds. Lord, have mercy. If you would grab hold to the mentality of those who pray with expectation, pray as a means of battling in warfare, then God will make sure that we get a knocking at the door. I need you to type. We have to be a praying church oh yes we have to be a praying church we have to have a relationship with God and be sensitive to his voice ah, Lord have mercy because when the enemy wants to bring havoc against the church when he uses tools like apostolic incarceration and traditional bondage we as the church have to learn we have to learn to go into war for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty unto God for the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God we must unify and come together and pray yes sir we don't have time to fight each other because we are already fighting an enemy and we are not each other's enemy oh Lord I wish I could tell you to touch your neighbor and say neighbor we are not each other's enemy Lord have mercy cut this mic up let me ride for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places we have the power to get us a knock we have the power to get the tools to get us a knock we have the relationship to get us a knock let me tell you what Peter's knock on the door represents it represents power it represents favor it represents progression in ministry it represents apostolic alignment it represents victory for the church joy for the church freedom for the church that's why while the enemy is attacking the church we have to make sure that we are in right standing with God keep prayer as the foundation and the backbone of the church and expect a knock yeah yeah, I'm so glad that whenever you get the knock, it's going.
gonna be ministry on another level power on another level outreach on another level gifting on another level a hardness of souls on another level favor in the city on another level because the Bible says after Herod did all he could to destroy the church and his leaders Herod died and the church grew and multiplied would you hear somebody in your house and tell them no matter much the devil afflicts us we shall not die but we shall multiply many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord he deliver out of them all no matter what the devil tries to put the church through and his leaders through we shall come out on top yay and all these things we are more than conqueror to them through Christ Jesus who loves us no weapon no weapon no 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 weapon formed against me prosper yeah yeah I, I, I wish you would tell yourself the church shall live you shall live you shall not die but you shall live and declare the works of the Lord I don't know how you feel about it but I'm so glad that at the end of the day victory I said victory victory belongs to the church we uphold the standard we dismiss our agenda we strengthen our relationship with God so now things ain't got no choice but to get a whole lot better I said better yeah yeah Lord have mercy we've been through a lot as the church of God but one thing I know one thing I know I had to cry all night we had to shed some tears but we've been made I said we've been made do it for a night but grab your neighbor's hand and say neighbor John. John comes in the morning it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right got to close but when they open the door the Bible says that they praise God I dare you because God is saying tonight knock knock what you've been praying for is at the door what you cried for is at the door yeah yeah yes sir whatever you ask God for is at the door so praise God in your home praise him in your car praise him with your phone praise him in your kitchen oh shucks let everything that I have breath open your mouth and pray Set open your mouth and give them glory right where you are. Praise them. Tell everybody in your house, give me some space. I got 
to praise him. Give me some praise. I got to dance. Give me some praise. Give me some space. I got to lift him up. Praise him. Right where you are, give God glory. Give him praise. Praise him for the knock. Praise him for the knock. I've been through a lot and I needed to hear the knock. I cried a lot and I needed to hear the knock. Praise him for the knock. Open the door and praise him. Open the door and give him glory. 